Uh, yeah, I had some contact with the Halo universe, but I didn't grow up with with TV or video games as a kid. But I had played uh, I had played the Halo games uh, at people's house after school when I was a teenager. Uh, hadn't played it as uh, the story or campaign mode. I had only played versus kind of the shooting portion, so I didn't I didn't have any conception of it as a story franchise uh, until I got the job and that was really the eye-opening part was learning about all the mythology that's been established over the course of the last 20 years it's it's vast and deep and rich um, and yes uh, there was a lot of excitement in the Schreiber household on the day that I was cast particularly my 10 year old is uh, is very very thrilled that his dad is master chief and uh, brings it up at school as often as possible I was very familiar with Halo and the franchise, you know, I, I grew up with Halo. I played, I remember when Halo came out as a teenager, I played through in co-op with my best mate and I played Halo 2 and Halo 3 as well and Halo 4. And uh, when I got the role um, in season two of Halo, I played through Halo Reach. You know, I, games have been a huge part of my life ever since I had a Commodore 64. Um, uh, so yeah, I grew up playing games with my brother and I was fully aware of the Halo franchise and, and beyond excited to be a part of it, so yeah. It's no wonder you're experiencing some residual effects. I'm not Irrational experiencing any behavior. residual Impaired, side effects. No sir. memory, negative Emotional sir. dysregulation, John, and until you are willing to be honest and forthcoming with me about your condition, what condition? I cannot authorize Silver Team to perform combat operations. I didn't have to go through an audition process for this because, you know, I I worked with the showrunner previously, um, David Wiener, who's our new showrunner, the showrunner for season two. You know, um, after season one of Halo, they they kind of brought in a new team and he was the new showrunner and we had a lot of new heads of department and I'd worked with David on a show called Brave New World, which was also a sci-fi show. And so he uh, emailed me out of the blue. I hadn't spoken to him for a little while and said, there's a part in my new show. Um, it's a big part and it's, uh, it's a new show that I'm doing and I'd love you to do it if you're interested. Are you available for a call? And I thought, great, you know, but that's, that's, that sounds good. What is that? And then I went, oh, it's Halo. <laughs> it was like, oh, wow. Because, you know, the enormity of that franchise is undeniable. So, yeah. I was intrigued by the possibility of, we had a new timeline. Um, we were introducing a couple of new characters. Um, I was also told that they were very curious about exploring the sort of inner workings of Dr. Halsey's mind and where her passion emanates from and why she is so fixated on uh, these experiments and this uh, belief she has that she can enhance human beings to, to the next level and that uh, we are our own worst enemy, I suppose. I, I, I like her her way of thinking around just resources and how we've used them as a species that so many of our resources have been spent on learning how to kill one another or you know uh, uh, other other um you, you know uh, i suppose forms of life um rather than progressing and using our intelligence and all of our resources to perhaps tap into something that's much much bigger than us um and much more interesting and perhaps collaborative get down Uh, I think that uh, Halo fans can look forward the most to uh, a, a few major events in Halo lore that happened throughout the season. Um, most specifically, uh, in in Episode 4, there's a massive event that uh, every Halo fan will be familiar with, uh, and it really provides the midpoint of the season um, in a way that... Uh, you know, colors everything that comes before it, and we'll spend a number of episodes trying to recover from it uh, afterwards. 
I was just so excited, you know, after I was offered the role, David sent me the first three scripts to look at, just so I could, you know, know what it was that I'd be getting into. And uh, I just was struck by how great the writing was, how it was much more character focused than season one, but also had this level of action which was maintained through the episodes. Uh, I just, I, I enjoyed season one, but I just felt like it was a better show, season two. It was the halo that I wanted to see. And um, the, the character for me was undeniable. There was, you know, you, you look for opportunities as an actor, or I look for opportunities, it, you know, in the scripts, moments where I can show levels of the character that might not be evident at first glance like you know perhaps james ackerson will come across as a villain in in the first few episodes but then what i'm looking for is moments of vulnerability and moments where we realize why he's doing what he's doing and what his motives are and we perhaps come to understand them even if we don't agree with them and, and all of that was there in the script and so that was terrifically exciting because i felt like we're making you know an adult show, a show that's layered with all of these different dynamics, and yet it's so undeniably cool as well with all this action. And then when I got there and I got to see how the sets had changed and the, the costumes had changed and the aesthetic had changed from season one, I think it's evident in the trailers that have been released, it's a kind of grittier, grimier world. And so that to me was also very appealing. Uh, well, I mean, one of the most immediate and biggest obstacles that they have to deal with is that the war is not going well for humanity. The Covenant is uh, is on the doorstep. They're, the threat is very real, and the fact that um, humans could be extinct shortly is is uh, a reality. So that's the biggest, biggest thing that they're dealing with. Um, the Silver Team also has to deal with the fact that they've been sort of relegated to mop-up duty. Uh, and they have to figure out why they're being used in this way. And that's kind of left to John to investigate with the new boss, uh, Ackerson, as to what his intentions are and, and why he's using them the way that he is. Um, they're going to have to contend with uh, loss, uh, major amounts of loss, and uh, what that means to each person. They're going to have to battle um, their own personal demons of uh asking themselves why they fight and, and what it's what it's for, what, why it's necessary. Uh, and eventually they're going to have to come to terms with uh, who they are and, and what their what their place in the world is um, by the last episode. I'm the ridiculous one. While you sit here playing Pirate King, pretending that everything's as it was fantasizing about being the hero that brings Catherine Halsey to justice. Oh, fantasize about Catherine I saw Halsey. the look in your eyes when that boy said her name. Hardest Parts physically is uh, just summoning uh, enough energy to get through each day <laughs> in the preparation and then in the shooting. It's a, it's a Herculean task um, at, at its easiest. Um, so, but, but one that, uh, I, I really enjoy so much and, and feel so honored to, to get to do, you know, um, keeping myself in, in shape obviously is part of the job, um, keeping, keeping the amount of muscle that, uh, we put on in the prep months before we shoot, uh, keeping it on through the whole season is, is probably the biggest challenge, uh, staying limber, staying loose um staying mobile and being able to be fast and explosive in the action sequences are are other physical challenges uh the mental challenges are challenges of exhaustion um challenges of uh collaboration and um you know figuring out what the right direction is at any one moment and advocating for your peace and still being a good enough teammate to uh, be able to do what's asked of you if you don't get your way. Um, those are the biggest challenges that I face on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, as I mentioned, you know, I thought it was uh, very important, first of all, to play Halo Reach all the way through. Any excuse to play a video game as part of my preparation process is always welcome. Uh, so there was that, and then, of course, I, I, I w jumped back into some of the graphic novels. Um, 
Uh, I like to create playlists for my characters. You know, music I find often helps evoke emotion and put you in a certain frame of mind. But really for me, the, the biggest part of developing the character was, was what was there in the scripts. Like I mentioned, the writing was just so good and so rich in this show. Uh, it was all there for me. There was just so much to kind of, to latch on to and to pull out. And so I really, I, I create a kind of character journal normally for each character, just a place to accumulate all my thoughts and feelings and ideas about the character. And that's an enjoyable part of the process for me. And so a lot of what went into that was finding all of these, th these nuggets that were in the script for me and, and, and putting them in there and, and building the character that way. And then you, you learn a lot from being on set as well, the dynamic that you have with the other actors and the way that, you know, James Ackerson plays a lot of power games. And so that dynamic was very important to me, how to kind of manipulate that energy in the room and take command and then seem like I'm letting them have control and then show them that uh, I am in fact the boss. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> What what was if I can ask you that if I, what, what which like uh, uh, artists or or songs were in that playlist special? You know, um, uh, I'll divulge one song to you that was in there because I have to keep uh, some of Ackerson just for myself. <laughs> uh, okay, so there was a there's a song by the Beatles called Julia that John Lennon sings. That that song was in there, and that speaks to the. Uh, the side of Ackerson that, that really nobody sees, I think. 